Hey guys, I had mentioned in a recent video that I picked up some Rider service info and I thought I'd make a quick video and go through it. So what I bid on and won on eBay was volume one of the Rider's television manual series. I believe it has 28 volumes in all. They stopped making them in the late 50s, say 59 or so, just when the predictors were coming out. Then they started, well, I'm not sure, maybe there's a copyright date in here, but for sure volume one is the earliest of the early TVs, like the, the 46, 47 models only. Uh, what I wasn't expecting was to get these two items with it as well. This one's pretty self-explanatory. It's an index. It uh, covers the first eight volumes, so you can look up your TV in here, like the good old Motorola VT71. There it is, covered in volume one, because yes, those little seven-inch Motorola's were one of the earliest TVs in the market that came out in 47. And they do it both by chassis and by model number. So VT71 is listed over here, but it also uses the TS4 chassis. And you can look that up over here. So it's handy not only to look up your TV to see what volume of the service info it's in, but it also will tell you what chassis it uses. Or, if you got a chassis, it'll tell you what models used it. Alright, and then this is something I'd never seen before. How it works. And complete index for volumes 1 and 2. So this must have come with the really early stuff. I mean, just the first two volumes. So, so uh, basically every, every few months or years, they would have to keep putting out more editions of the index as they added more volumes to the series. So this is just 1 and 2, this is 1 through 8, and I believe I've got one somewhere around here that covers up to volumes 14 or something like that. And if you go online, the Early TV Foundation has scanned the complete index. But the, what also is in here is some theory of operation, how TVs work. Copyright 1950, okay. So maybe that's when these first volumes came out. What I'm not sure about is this is Writer's Television Manual Volume 2, and then how it works, blah, blah, blah. Well, this clearly isn't the Writer's TV Manual Volume 2. That's another giant book like this. So I don't know if there's another one of these, and they were saying that this itself is the second volume, or, or what the deal is. Because if there is a volume one to this, I'd really like to get a copy of it. They jump right into TV receiver controls, and maybe volume one covers some other principles of TV operation. Anyways, I'll tell you some basic commonly used circuits you'd find in a TV and how they operate section by section. Next on the air carrier sound system, which not many early TVs used, but the Motorola VT71 it did. That's where both the sound and video go through a common IF and they pick out the sound right after the, the detector. Most early TVs have a pick off right after the tuner and they have a whole separate IF just for sound and one for video. So, good to flip through some of this theory of operation when you're working on vintage sets so you can understand how the circuits work. Alright, so now on to this. As I was flipping through this, I saw something that at first I thought was kind of funny, but actually it's a pretty serious topic, which is first aid treatment for electric shock. Yes, there is definitely a shock potential in these early sets. Not so much from the high voltage, which is generally very low current, but definitely the B plus circuits, which is typically around 350 volts, those carry a lot of current, definitely lethal. And the high voltage, while it may not cause cardiac arrest outright, it can certainly cause you to jerk backwards and be injured by you know, falling back into something, knocking into something. You also mentioned the uh, pitcher tube. 
handling precautions. Another potentially potential issue is if you pick up a pitcher tube that has not been fully discharged and your hand touches the anode button and causes shock, your arm jerks involuntarily, you drop the pitcher tube, it shatters, glass goes flying. So definitely want to take your precautions. I find this first volume especially interesting because there are a lot of rare sets in here. Sets that I have never seen and very likely never will see. Some that might not even exist anymore. And this is definitely one of them. I don't know if they'll have a picture of it. Some of the early sets, there was actually one out in 45, they were kits. People, uh, companies really wanted to rush something to the market to be the first or one of the first. So they had to slap together designs and scramble after the war ended to get things into production. So you'll see some weird tube lineups, some odd designs. This is definitely one of them. I don't think I've ever seen a 7Y4 rectifier in a TV. Now I mentioned about these TVs, the high voltage only not being lethal because they use flyback designs with low current. Some of the earliest sets like this are brute force where they actually have a high voltage winding on the main power transformer and use a rectifier tube. And if you see something like a 7EP4, for sure that's very early. That predates the 7JP4 that was used in most of these electrostatic sets. U.S. television. A lot of people think this is one of the ugliest TVs ever made, and I can understand why, but I'd love to have one someday. These were designed for bars and restaurants and such. It has a, a leather exterior with rivets on it, kind of like a uh, country western look, and it has a rear projection TV and AM FM radio, and I believe it was designed to be coin operated. Do show up now and then on uh, for auction. Usually you can get them fairly inexpensively because not many people want one. They're very large and kind of ugly. We got Helicrafters, Belmont, Westinghouse, Robert Carlson, Philco, Dumont. It's Apparently it's not alphabetical. <laughs> She's kind of been jumping all over with manufacturers. I'm trying to find out some of the photos of the sets. There's plenty of typewritten info. Now this info came from the manufacturers. Riders would make deals with the manufacturers to reprint their factory service info. Whereas Sam's photo fact, they would actually buy a TV and reverse engineer it. So their service manuals are very consistent with the layout, schematic up front, then photos with part placement diagrams and a parts list. These, every manufacturer did a little bit differently. Sometimes you just get a schematic. Uh, if you're lucky, you get a little bit of write-up, maybe some alignment info, often uh, no parts list. Here's another very early TV. I believe this was a kit. Either a kit or they sold very crude cabinets. Electrostatic set. Electrotech TV. Doubt I'll ever see one. And there's a 10 inch model. He's got 10 BP4. Emerson. Garad, another. Not very often some brand, I guess it's more common on the East Coast, I'd love to get one someday. Uh, they do have some of the pre-war sets in here, like this GE model HM171 is a pre-war set, so again that brute force high voltage power supply off of the power transformer. Five BP4 pitcher tube. Which actually aren't as hard to find as you might think. It's probably the most common of the early pre-war pitcher tubes. Basically an oscilloscope CRT, the 5 BP1 is super common. They just use a different phosphor on the front of it.
Now, if you're on a workbench, this is very awkward to work with. The gigantic thing and you gotta fold out all these schematics. But these are designed to come apart. Up front here you can slide this bar over, go down to the section you want and remove it. Kind of a pain to put it all back together and keep things intact. And it's not too uncommon to come across one of these and sections are missing. This one looks to be pretty complete though. You can pull this up and then take your section out. The depth of information on some of these early models is pretty impressive. I'm thinking that the manufacturers really wanted to let the servicemen know how to work on these on this new technology so they really uh, went all out. So for example, here's a, Mo a Motorola VK101, one of their very first models. 10 inch uh, magnetic deflection. Actually not too uh, dissimilar from the uh, VK106 I picked up and did a video on. So it's page after page of detail about how everything works. The tuner and the IF and the sync circuits. Subsections of the schematic, text description, illustrations of the waveforms. People ask me, how do I know about uh, how to work on these old sets? Well, this is a big part of it, just reading this. Yeah, not the most exciting thing to read, but if you want to learn, you know, put in the time. And on and on and on and on and on. Alignment procedure and then troubleshooting. If you have problems, they tell you what part of the circuits to check. Waveforms. Alright, so that's into the Motorola. Now, this is the last thing I wanted to show you guys was the sections on the pre war RCA TVs, the ones that were shown at the World's Fair in 1939. So, this is a TT5 or TRK5. Love to get one of these, one of the rarest of the pre war sets. Well, they're all pretty rare, but this one looks really cool. Unfortunately, there's a picture of it in here. Go online and Google TRK5. You'll find one. Then we get the TRK912. Here we get pictures. This is the most common one. This is they had a they made a bunch of these for the World's Fair. And uh, some of these were even converted after the war to work on the updated NTSC specs. There's a TRK9, which I think is also very rare, if any even exist. So the 12, the picture tube is so long, it's mounted vertically, there's a flip top with a mirror on it. The 5 and the 9, it's small enough that it's up top, and the cabinets are spectacular, Art Deco design. These black and white reproductions really don't do it justice. Very complicated sets. And part of that is the tubes that they had to use were all the big tubes. All octals, and uh, they didn't have anything like dual triodes, I don't think. So, no 6SN7s or anything like that. You had to use tube after tube after tube, all single function tubes. Well, that's going to be it for now. I hope you enjoyed this look at some really early TV servicing information. If you'd like to get your own copy, well, there are uh, scans available online for free download. Or keep your eye out on eBay. These do show up from time to time.